Megan Maroney is here. She's the host of Tech News Today with Jason Howell. And, of course, iOS Today, our iOS show. Um, but we sent you on a mission because you're a pescatarian. I am, yes. I don't eat red meat. And not because, I mean, I like animals. But mm -hmm. mostly it's just the damage to the environment that so much consumption of meat does. Like how much water a cow takes, how much grain a cow takes, um, you know, and chickens as well. So... Yeah, I was really interested in this lab-grown meat. It sounds gross, but, I mean, doesn't it also sound gross that we're, like, you know, using a cow to make meat? I was going to say, go into the average slaughterhouse and you'll That's come out. That's a little grosser, <laughs> isn't it? I don't yeah. want to think about that. Yes, but the te tech industry is really fascinated by this for a lot of reasons. Like, uh, the Impossible Foods has a... Um, Google Ventures has invested in them. Bill Gates has invested in them. And if you think about it, it makes sense because, you know, all these people are very forward looking, mm -hmm. right? Like, so what's it going to be like in 50 years, you know, when we're not driving our own cars and, you know, when robots have your job? And so, yeah, I think that uh, we also will not have cows if we eat them at the rate that be we're Be good for them. global warming as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah. Um, we'll eliminate the essential country sport of cow tipping, I understand, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> That's well, robot me. Don't cow do tipping. that. Yeah. Don't do robot that. Cow robot cow cows are fun to tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, Elon Musk's brother says that uh, food is the next big venture opportunity. So this is going to be one to watch. We sent uh, Megan down to test the Impossible Burger Watch. I'm in San Francisco for the West Coast launch of the Impossible Foods Burger. Now, Silicon Valley folk are always talking about how they are going to change the world. That's what Impossible Foods says, too. Let's see if they can do it with the burger that is not made from a cow. Impossible Foods mission is to replace animals as the system that we use to produce meat across the board globally with a much more sustainable system that makes more nutritious, safer, healthier, more delicious foods for the world. We just heard the speech about what it was. It's uncompromisingly delicious food. How would you describe this, other than that, this burger that's not made from cows? The Impossible Burger was first made for the love of meat. And our target is to uh, focus on people who crave a delicious burger. This is the first burger I've eaten in almost a decade. I eat a lot of veggie burgers, and this tastes way better. It tastes like a cow. I'm not being pumped, am I? The Impossible Burger has this thing called legume hemoglobin in it. It's the building block of life that we found in a plant and we produce uh, at a scale that uses a fraction of our resources. It turns out heme is this catalyst that when you cook it, it makes meat like beef taste like beef, as you see in the Impossible Burger. But it's also the reason why we think chicken tastes like chicken and fish tastes like fish. They mix the burger in front of me. My senses just became overloaded. I could smell meat. All those amino acids and the heme and once it's getting put together, that's what I'm smelling and it's it gave me a, an olfactory sense, which is you tingle and you crave it. You have some competitors out there. Beyond Meat uh, just got investment from Tyson Foods, but they have kind of a different mission that you do. You guys are starting in restaurants. Explain why you're, uh, how you're different than Beyond Meat. One of the big differences is our product when it's raw can be picked by a world-class chef like Chris Cosentino, Tracy Desjardins, Tall Roman. They can turn it into tartare or meatloaf or a burger. Impossible tackled every aspect of a burger. The aroma, the texture, the visual. The way it worked, the way it tasted, we tried it rare, we tried it medium rare. It's incredible to me that you can take this burger and you can cook it. I also think our go-to-market strategy is very different. When you have our product, you can establish credibility with the, the meat-eating target with world-class chefs who will only put on their menu something that they will stand behind, as you saw today. I'm always really mindful about sustainability and wanting to know where my products come from and that they're obviously delicious, but that there's also a consciousness about um, what the impact is from an environmental standpoint. The last part of it is, in order to really have a big impact on the mission, you have to attract the meat eater. Uh, like me, I'm a meat eater. Um, and, and I think the bar is high. I think meat eaters, when they bite into a juicy burger, either feel like, wow, that's delicious or not. That is good. I've served it to some pretty meaty chefs in LA and they're just blown away. This is great. You're in high-end restaurants. This is wonderful. I mean, I'm definitely thinking, like, this, these will be restaurants I would go to just to have this burger. But what about for the rest of the people? You know, people yeah. complain a lot, like, oh, yes, if everyone could shop at Whole Foods, wouldn't it be wonderful? But, every, you know, every family can't afford. What's getting in the way of getting it to uh, the rest of people? We need to ramp up our supply. And that is part of our challenge. You know, as we ramp up our supply, 
um, you'll see us more and more uh, widely available. But that takes execution and time. Thankfully, it doesn't take a leap of technology for our product, uh, but it does take time. Uh, and that's the only thing that uh, is between us uh, and being more widely available. And so you have lots of impressive investors um, from big, you know, big wigs in the tech world. Um, why do you, how do you explain their interest? You know, people, you know, Google Ventures, Bill Gates, how do you explain their interest in Impossible Foods? These folks that are uh, investors are advocates for consumers having another great choice that happens to be through innovation and technology, uh, but also care deeply about how we sustain uh, the planet that we live in. The biggest threat to our climate and ecosystems is animal agriculture. Our production process uses 120th the land area, uses a quarter of the water and uh, one eighth the greenhouse gas emissions. To put that in more familiar terms, if you choose a quarter pound Impossible Burger instead of a quarter pound burger made from a cow, you save greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to what you would emit driving 18 miles in the average American car. That's one quarter pound burger. We do our jobs right, our impact will be seen from space. And, and that's exactly how big the opportunity is. It's such a large category of food, this meat that we're going after in dairy, and the consumption of resources associated with it today needs to be improved. The profile of the Impossible Burger is just an example of how creating a delicious product has the extra benefit of transforming the world. Good. I want to go there. <laughs> so what do you think? You thought it looked delicious, right? It I mean, looks it, delicious. What does it taste like? It, I thought it tasted good. I like mean, beef. But, yeah, but it's but also But you haven't like... had a burger in 10 years. You're the wrong person. Kara, <laughs> Kara, you've had a burger in 10 years, right? You, you eat Jeez. meat. Yeah. I do. I love meat. What'd you think? <laughs> um, it, it was pretty good, actually. I was surprised. She it, said it was it soft, me, though. Yeah, it reminded me more of bison meat. I've had, like, a bison burger oh. before, yeah. and it's okay. a little bit softer texture. But it tasted like... Beef. I'm sure they could make it chewier. Yeah. So now, the thing that interests me was the hemi. Uh, heme. Heme. Like hemoglobin. Okay, H-E-M-E. Yes, yeah, so this was a Stanford, you know, engineer. He got into the lab. He took apart, you know, he looked at what blood was made of. And it's, they call it plant blood, but it's so just So they tried to duplicate blood. hemoglobin right. blood. Yeah. And that's the juice mm -hmm. in the burger. And it's true, if a burger is dry, and that's one of the problems yeah. with veggie burgers, mm -hmm. is they're kind of dry, and one they don't the have that <laughs> juice stripping down your right. chin that you're yeah. looking for. And when also, a lot of veggie burgers are quite bad for you because they put a lot of fat in there to try right. and simulate that, that thing. How much fat is in this? Um, I don't know. It's coconut fat. There's no cholesterol at all. Like, that's the difference. Um, I don't know what it's the It's a vegetable fat. fat. But, yeah, yeah it's... Um, but, you know, it's... It's not for me. It's, so there, we're looking at the nutrition facts. It looks like 11 grams yeah, of not fat. Bad. Not so um, it's not, you know, it's not for me. I'm used to eating veggie that's burgers. That's a lot They're, of sodium. Yeah. You know who? This is what we've got to do. And by the way, they're smart. They're not offering it in grocery stores yet. Only in high-end restaurants. That'll give it the cachet. If you get somebody like Tra like uh, Tracy Desjardins, Tracy Desjardins, Jardinier, Jardin, you know what I'm talking. Jardinier. Jardinier. If you get her. <laughs> It's a vegetarian restaurant. No, it's no? Jardinier is Oh, it's not. No. But if you get her to serve it in her high-end restaurant, that's going to add a little cachet. Mm -hmm. But I want to take our 13-year-old son. Because <laughs> he, if anywhere we go, it's a burger. Mm -hmm. If he, and I'm not going to tell him, if he eats it and says, no, that was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lying to your kids is always the best. <laughs> 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 Jardinier and Coxcomb. Coxcomb is a meat. Coxcomb is a meat restaurant, and okay. then Crossroads is the vegetarian that's kind of, restaurant. That's kind of mean to bring him to a meat restaurant and make him eat that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, but it, you know, we gotta. Uh, I want to try. Coxcomb is a very like environmentally friendly right. meat restaurant. Mm, like it. they it's use the whole they use the whole cow or oh. the whole animal. That's their thing, you know, right. to the sustainable yeah. beef. Crossroads so. Kitchen in L.A and Momofuku Nisha, Nishi in New York City. So, I mean, their argument is, like, here are these famous chefs. You know, if you're mm -hmm. a foodie, you recognize these names. And if they're going to put these on their menu, then, okay, it's not just some other thing I saw at Whole Foods. It's probably going to taste like garbage. Is it expensive? Um, I think the burger's are around $20 <gasps> now, but... You know, like I said, because I asked this question too. Like, if you know, if you people eat at McDonald's, not because it's delicious, but because it's, it's cheap. cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And so everybody, you know, if every, if we're really going to make, you know, if we're if our difference is really going to be seen from space, mm -hmm. as he says, it's going to have to be cheaper. And then that's what I asked him, and you know, he said, in the future, it will be. Uh, I mean, they've already made burgers out of vat-grown meats, but they cost about a hundred thousand dollars 
per burger. Yeah. So uh, it's not even remotely. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, uh, Sergey Brin is a big investor yeah, in this. Exactly, yeah. but it's phenomenally expensive. If they can yeah. get it down to this kind of price now. Once All this start, stuff costs money at first. Yeah. And then the price ho will hopefully drop down. And Because you're right, the environmental Im impact of eating meat is very high, but it's delicious. Um, <laughs> and, it's, and it's steeped in our memories, too, right? You know the smell. They also engineer mm. the smell. And we remember that as children. Like, so it actually they, smells like a burger. Yes, it smells like, you know, mm. and kudos to Kara for filming this, because she, like, knocked that famous chef right out of the... Were you hungry? <laughs> that's, that's a good sign, To get too. in there and see the sizzling, like, you know, bleeding burger... Uh, which probably sounds gross to a vegetarian. We, but, um, wait a minute, Becky. Oh, Becky, no, don't. She's eating the blood. Yeah, she she said it tasted like blood. I don't know. Well, how, how does she, she know I, that? It's a really um, good question. Is it irony? Irony, irony yes, minerally. She yeah, said. Interesting, yeah, interesting. Huh? Okay, yeah. that's kind of disturbing. Next time I want to show with her, you, know, it's like, <laughs> you just sit over there, shall we? <laughs> I'm just saying she hasn't aged in 20 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the secret is. But. Maybe heme, maybe blood. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for taking that assignment and doing it. I think it's very interesting. I kind of want to try it now.